Phenotesting is important for diagnosing uh, patients in clinical practice, but it also supports and endorses other key areas such as adherence, such as titrating treatment, and making sure that patients are using their inhalers correctly. It gives you a lovely visual display of numbers so patients can actually visually see that their asthma is becoming well controlled or that their asthma is becoming poorly controlled and helps guide that clinician to exactly what treatment they should be prescribing, but is there something else that's going on um, around their care rather than just the uh, inhaled corticosteroid that they are or are not taking. We're using pheno testing to be able to accurately prescribe inhaled corticosteroids and titrate them to the needs of the individual patients is incredibly important. Um, and making sure that you're giving the dose that is right for the patient, but also in terms of the cost and the cost implication for the healthcare service, but also in terms for the patient. And I'll give one a, a example of this. We had a gentleman that was a prison officer who wasn't using his inhaled corticosteroid um, and was consistently using his beta-2 agonist, his short-acting beta-2 agonist and was incredibly struggling for breath uh, whilst um, within his work environment. Um, he did have an inhaled corticosteroid inhaler, which he very rarely used, but using the pheno testing helped support the fact that he did actually have asthma and the importance of taking his treatment. He then subsequently used his inhaled corticosteroid um, once a day um, and then came back for pheno testing and his pheno testing had reduced from 72 parts per billion to 54 parts per billion and then sort of exploring with him what exactly was going on. It was actually his inhaler technique that wasn't correct. So yes, it is important to prescribe, but it is also incredibly important to check people's inhaler technique as well as their adherence to medication. The inhaler and device that he would preferred at that particular time was a dry powdered inhaler, uh, which suited his lifestyle. Um, and going through inhaler technique, when he then subsequently came back um, four weeks later, his pheno was 13 parts per billion, um, well controlled, was able to work more effectively. So pheno in that context enabled us as clinicians to titrate his treatment accordingly, but also thinking outside the box. It's not just about adherence, it's also about inhaler technique as well and what else is going on uh, within their lifestyle. Pheno testing in clinical practice definitely helps support with the reduction of exacerbations. We have many patients that have exacerbations, particularly who we see in secondary care in the hospital setting, but also indeed in primary care. And I'll give one example of this, where we had a gentleman who was diagnosed with COPD for many years and who was continually um, having exacerbations, hospital visits and emergency department visits, and was given oral corticosteroids as part of his treatment plan. But in between time, most of his treatment was more around the bronchodilator therapy. He came in to see us uh, within the, the, the hospital setting. Pheno testing was performed and bearing in mind that a normal pheno is anything below 40 parts per billion. His pheno was 246. Diagnosing this particular gentleman with asthma and giving him the right treatment that was supported by the pheno testing enabled this gentleman on his subsequent visit when we see him months later, a few months later, his pheno had dropped down to just shy of the 40 parts per billion. So in terms of exacerbations, it, the impact that pheno testing had is, is incredible because it gives you that tool, that, that information to be able to diagnose patients accurately.